welcome to another edition of To The Point. Legislature and the judiciary are two important organs of democracy, but of late we've been seeing that these two institutions have been pitted against each other over a range of issues, be it the pendency of cases, appointment of judges, or in matters where many deem it as judicial overreach. Joining me now is Minister of State for Law and Justice, Mr. P.P. Chaudhary. Welcome, sir, and To The Point. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Chaudhary, uh, I'll throw some figures at you which are startling and which I'm sure uh, you must have read through many a times. Uh, regarding the pendency of cases, uh, Uttar Pradesh, 51 lakh court cases pending, Maharashtra, 29, Gujarat, 22, West Bengal, 13. If I could ask you that do these abysmal figures really allow you to sleep peacefully as a law minister? No, definitely. These figures have not been accumulated for last two years. Now, pendency as on today in subordinate courts, you are saying about this in all the courts, including high court and uh, right, subordinate right. courts. So in fact, not, these are the figures only, which have been quoted by the law ministry. Not, not only the, the, with respect to some of the high courts, but I am referring to all the high courts in the right. country. I am saying about the, all the subordinate courts in the country. As on today, the pendency in various courts were earlier, was 2 crore 77 lakhs. Right. Now it has reduced to 2 crore 70 lakhs. Okay. It is decreasing. Pendency of the cases is decreasing, not increasing for the last two years. In subordinate courts are concerned, the creation of the vacancies, as on today, the vacancies have been created and increased to from last so many years, from 14,000 to 20,000 around. Now, as on today in subordinate courts, vacancies are 4,500 in all, all courts of the countries. And now who is competent to recruit and appoint? It is not the government of India. It is the high courts and the state, respective state governments. Basically, for filling up the vacancies part is concerned, it can only be done by the respective high courts and the government. So state are, you, government. are you putting the ball in the court of the high courts that apparently they are not initiating the procedure of the, the, the selection procedure? I am not Because you, you said that I'm, the government I'm of India not, is not it, responsible. This, but just I'm, I'm, I have informed you about the, the constitutional scheme. Okay. I am not putting the ball in the court of the, the state government and the respective high courts. Mm -hmm. But what I am saying that this is who is the primary responsibility. Okay. After all in a country it is the government of India. Mm -hmm. We have to issue the time to time advisory and the government of India, especially the law ministry, has issued the advisory time to time to the various state government for filling up the vacancies. But at the same time, the Supreme Court under the administrative control and the judicial control, either it may be a judicial side or administrative side, mm -hmm. the Supreme Court of India is competent to issue such direction to the various high courts to fill up the vacancies. But I would like to inform you this, that the filling of the vacancy, the pendency of the cases is not the sole criteria on account of the, the vacancies are available. There may be so many reasons, not only the vacancy, it is not the sole factor. There may be other factors are there, so that technology now plays the pivotal role but Mr. Chaudhary, for clearing when it, the cases. Right, but when it comes to filling up the vacancies in the high courts, uh, this is emerging as one of the stickiest issues between the judiciary and the government of India. What is the reason? Because from time to time, last year we've seen Mr. T.S. Thakur, he broke down uh, at an event where Prime Minister Narendra Modi was also present. And he actually tried to draw the attention on the vacancy of uh, uh, vacancies uh, which, which are available and the appointments are not being done. Uh, there is a certain kind of a blame game between the judiciary and the government of India. What is the major reason for that? Uh, because I could not complete at that time my sentence earlier with respect to pendency in the subordinate courts. One of the region, then I will come to that question later. One of the reasons for pendency is also because under the Negotiable Instrument Act okay. and uh, the Traffic Cases, Motor Vehicles Act. Mm -hmm. This out of 2 crore 77 lakh cases, these cases relating to under two subjects were around 37%. So the government has taken the measure, the government of India has taken the measure 
for amendment of the negotiable instrument and the this the major shall also be taken with respect to the all these chalan cases you see that chalan cases how many chalan cases are there negotiable instrument cases so 37% cases relate to this so if we have to bifurcate what type of cases are pending so for this purpose the government is taking the measure and the, the government has made the suitable amendment in the negotiable instrument act so i think this is also one of the reason that cases have decreased not increased for last two years and now second question about this question about this uh, appointment of the about the judiciary i don't think there is any problem the process there is no uh, if i show the figure this 86 high court because in uh, in 2015 right from april to december 2015 the validity of njec national judicial appointment commission was subject matter of challenge before the supreme court. right so last year there has been no appointment no it was because the supreme court had stated mm. that during the pendency of the proceeding because the matter was going on hearing was there so no appointment was made because the, their interim order was there by the supreme court so up to december 2015 no appointment was there and for that we can't attribute fault to anybody and from 2016 till now in 10 months and once you know that once the stay order is vacated then it takes some time to start the process mm -hmm. so at least one or two months then after A real process started in February March mm -hmm. 2016. Right. So in period of up to October 2016, 86 fresh appointments in the various high courts have been made. Mm -hmm. Four appointments in the Supreme Court have been made. Ten appointments you will you must have read the newspaper right. that ten appointments just five have already been reached to President of India because also I also came to know about that. So. this 96 appointment will be made very soon and apart from this 137 appointments those relate to either the extension of the term or the uh, confirmation or making the permanent those ad hoc or additional judges and 14 chief justices orders have been issued for appointment of the 14 chief justices some of the 33 transfers have orders have been effected if you this combine the entire figure and we combine the all the earlier figures right from the independence then you will find that it is a maximum activity which any government has taken so the government this government intent and the narendra modi is very clear but mr choudhury despite all uh, what you are saying and the appointments now will take place as what you say uh, there is a perception that there is some kind of a mistrust between the judiciary and the government at the moment because the government is not very serious about a reforms agenda but it is trying to uh, control the appointments of the judges why is there a perception like this is the appointment government is not controlling the appointment if i have stated these facts no when then you, then we, one can one can adjudicate upon these facts and it is the public at large they have to adjudicate i can't comment upon all these things yeah. if after despite this fact if any statement are there then i i have no comment for that because if if i have shown you that this is the uh, this the actual these are the facts and these are the figures and after putting these figures and facts before you and after saying that this is the only those 10 months the 63% this more than the appointment earlier made in earlier years and after, if if after this if if somebody says then i think uh, it is not the judiciary there is we we have because the judiciary speaks through the judgment but we 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 see some kind of a belligerence some kind of an insistence on both sides uh say for example when you talk about the new draft of the memorandum of procedure there is a clause you know on the right to reject a recommendation on on uh, on the grounds of national security then uh, there was the involvement of the law minister in the panel so these have been issues on which the judiciary has uh, has apparently not agreed then the government is also adamant so are we going to see some kind of a meeting ground uh, on this particular uh, subject i think this so far as uh, this power of the government with respect to framing the mop as per the judgment of the 16 december 2015 rendered by the supreme court it has been specifically made clear that memorandum of procedure mm -hmm. 
to be finalized by the government of India after consultation with the Supreme Court. Now, why, why the Supreme Court directed? Because after the detailed deliberation and arguments by the, from the various sides, right. the Supreme Court realized that the earlier memorandum of procedure, there is so many lacunas. It is not transparent. It is opaque. And by this process, we can't make the correct appointments. So on that basis, the Supreme Court directed the first memorandum of process is required to be finalized and to be prepared. And this duty has been cast on the government of India to finalize the memorandum of process, no doubt, after consultation with the Chief Justice of India. But question is, there are so many things have been discussed in the, by the Supreme Court in its judgment. That the, because it, why the appointment, earlier appointments were not treated as transfer, transparent by the Supreme Court. Reason was those appointments and the process of appointment by the old memorandum of procedure was not transparent. But judiciary from time to time has raked up this issue that the government cannot justify the delay in appointment of judges because the government themselves had promised uh, to the court, uh, the Attorney General had said that memorandum of procedure will not come in the way of appointing judges and that is what judiciary is questioning from time to time that why is there a delay in appointment of judges. For example, take the case of Allahabad High Court. It is one of the glaring examples where you have 82 vacancies but we don't know yet when the, when the judges will be appointed. I have specifically stated that after the decision of 16th of December 2015 judgment, where the memorandum of procedure was not, earlier memorandum of procedure was treated as non-transparent and opaque. Despite this fact, no doubt in that judgment, no time limit was prescribed for finalizing the memorandum of procedure. But it is intent of the judgment that we can't continue with the old, on the basis of the old memorandum of procedure if the Supreme Court says that it is non-transparent and we continue. But we continued. It is basically the government of India, law ministry, our former law minister, right. wrote a letter that till the final new memorandum of procedure is finalized, we will continue with the old memorandum of procedure. And on that basis, we, I'm saying that we are making almost 96 new appointments. Mm -hmm. Now that is based on, not on the new memorandum of process. Right. That is based on old memorandum of process. And the Supreme Court said the old memorandum of process is non-transparent. So the, all the appointments, all the activities in, during the year 2016 were made on the basis of the non-transparent basis. So, I'm so, so question is, now question is, we should not say, basically, both the institutions are part of the democracy. Yeah. And no doubt, the government is always committed for independence of the judiciary. And not only the government, but every institution should be committed with respect to the other institution so, for independent of its existence. Either it may be a judiciary should also think about the independence of the legislature. So can I, it may be a parliament, it may be executive. So can I ask a candid question that are we going to see a situation where uh, apparently uh, the ministers who are drafting the MOP and the collegium, uh, the, the members of the collegium, Will they amicably sit together and find a common meeting ground so that things are not done at the cost of constitutional justice? This, this basically, uh, you, we can't, once we have sent the, the MOP, hmm. nobody can this, uh, abuse the government okay. or, or say that the government is not performing its duty. Government on its pass for the last three, three months, or almost on 3rd of August, the government has finalized the MOP on its part and it has been already remitted back to Supreme Court. But there have been allegations by uh, Chief Justice uh, T.S. Thakur that the government of India has been sitting over the recommendations of the Collegium for the last nine months and uh, they have not made appointments. We, I am talking in two ways. The, so far as the process of appointment is concerned, we have not stopped the appointment on the basis that the fresh MOP has not been finalized, new MOP has not been finalized. The process of appointment is still on and going on. Mm -hmm. And it is going on on the same speed which was earlier for last, since 1950, 
it is being done. So there is, one can't accuse the government that the process is not going so on. If the, process is, if the process was not going on, then how 96 appointments, fresh appointment, and such a figure, I have already, because I'm not, I, I should not repeat those figures. Then how these things could happen that 96 fresh appointments could have been made. But if fresh appointments are in pipeline, then what is the hue and cry all about? Why do we see uh, the Chief Justice, why do we see members of the judiciary off and on talking about the appointments not taking place, delay in appointments, government being indifferent, government being nonchalant towards the uh, judiciary. Why is this impression then? The impression basically, we don't find anything because the ju we, according to me, not as a law minister, judiciary speaks through the order or judgment. If anything over and above said either in public or in the court, that is not the direction and judgment or order of the court. So normally we expect and everybody expect that the judiciary only speaks through the judgment or order. Because the judgment and order is the basically after, after adjudication. And adjudication happens when both the parties are heard. And if any statement is made without hearing the other side, then I think that, is, that can't be treated as an order of the Supreme Court that can be a, an opinion of the individual person. Every minister in the NDA government says that they respect the independence of the judiciary and we also feel that yes, the ministers are right when they say that they respect the independence of judiciary. But when it, com when it comes to the appointments of judges, filling in the vacancies, the impression which is going out to the common man is the fact that the NDA government somewhere is losing out that golden, golden opportunity to carry on a reforms agenda, the legal to carry on the legal reforms. Because despite having such a massive mandate, uh, somehow you know there is, a, there is no common meeting ground between the judiciary and the, and the government. On this, so far as this point is concerned, uh, I'm 100% agree on the issue that there must be a, a, this periodical meetings with the, all the institutions. Mm -hmm. It may be periodical meetings with the judiciary and executive. It may be periodical meetings with the, even the member of parliament and the, uh, this executive. It may be by way of a standing committee or like that. Mm -hmm. So uh, to eradicate any, any miscommunication or gap of communication, that can be solved. So I am of the firm view that there must be a, uh, we, for reducing the communication gap, there must be a periodical meeting. But the statement should not be either on the play, public platform or on in the, this while hearing in the court. Because uh, this, everybody, we, even the government, even the every citizen is committed and basically government is committed for independence of the judiciary. For independence of the judiciary, Everybody is responsible, not only the government, even the judici judiciary itself is also responsible. So, but if so, you, so the fourth because but if you listen for to creating the dignity of the judiciary, credibility of the judiciary, the duty is not only the city, uh, upon the citizen, but also upon the government, and, and basically it is much, much more on the judiciary. But if you have heard Chief Justice T.S. Thakur uh, talk uh, at recent events, he has. Uh, solely put the ball in the court of the government, that the government is indifferent, the government is, is being nonchalant. These are the kind of uh, things which you hear him, you know, in the lectures which he has given over the past events. Government is responsible. And when the Chief Justice and, of India and, speaks, then people and do And I listen. can tell you government is responsible. If you ask me any question here, I will not make any irresponsible statement. Government is accountable. The government is accountable to the parliament and the parliament is accountable to the public at last. And in a democracy, the institution which is accountable, institution which is accountable, then certainly a responsible statement is required to be made. But to my mind, apart from, uh, this is my personal opinion, not as a law minister, I am of the firm opinion and uh, this firm, I advocate on the issue that in a democracy, it may be a judiciary, it may be executive, it may be legislature. All the institutions should be accountable somewhere to somebody. If any of the institution of this limb of the democracy is non-accountable or unaccountable, then, then I can tell you that we can't say that it is mature democracy in our country, no doubt. 
because the accountability, this, if we say that the, what is the democracy, democracy consists of three limbs basically in our country. But the, but the one, fact is, one, is, one is judiciary, another is uh, this parliament and executive. So every institution in a democracy must be accountable. And accountability part is to be because it is the inner vigilance of the judiciary. That judiciary has to come out with the, what should be the accountability of the judiciary and how accountability of judiciary like accountability other limb of the democracy, just like this executive and parliament. So at the same time, the accountability factor should be applicable to every institution in the democracy. If it is not applicable, then we can't say that it is a mature democracy. But we have seen the UPA government also earlier and this uh, the factor, the mistrust factor was not so strong as we have seen in the last one and a half years, especially since the time when NJAC was struck down by the Supreme Court. Then we saw cases, uh, you know, where, uh, I mean, uh, the Supreme Court gave orders on Arunach, the way Arunachal government was run, then Uttarakhand uh, episode happened. So time and again, we are seeing that, you know, the two institutions are pitted against each other. And so many events which we are seeing where Prime <coughs> Minister and the Chief Justice are sitting and they are sharing the, the dais, we, we, we almost see it's like a conflict between the two institutions. Sometimes it looks like a conflict between the Prime Minister and the Chief Justice. You could correct me if I'm wrong. I mean, they completely look like they've been pitted against each other. No, no, you are definitely wrong. There is no question of pitting up each another, against each other. Because if you say that you have talked about the UPA government, there was no problem. But they, during the Congress time, no, that I'm was, not saying there was no problem. No, no, but, that, but, that, but it was this: who has saved the democracy? Who have saved the judiciary? You see that just you see about this during the emergency. Even the constitution was amended to undermine the judiciary, and it was the this BJP people. It was that government. They they have. Uh, supported the judiciary. So fr from the right, from the very beginning, in the blood of this BJP, it, the BJP's culture is for the independence of the judiciary and government is committed for that. But independent doesn't mean that undermining by the judiciary other institutions like parliament. Okay. So the parliament is competent to legislate the law. It is not the judiciary. But if an outsider, a non-legal person, would actually read it as a battle of egos, uh, a battle of dominance, so as to who is superior, the legislature or the judiciary, uh, how would you really convince the common man? This, so far as this, the, co the parliament is creature of the common man. It is creature of the citizen of this country. Right. So they are, parliament is accountable to the public. And it is the primary duty of the parliament as per constitution of the country to legislate the law. It is the supreme. So far the parliament is concerned, that is supreme. And to my mind, the parliament is supreme body and two wings of the democracy is one is executive and another is judiciary. But and, we'll and, and, and if the main, the parliament is just like the, this, you can say, uh, the main uh, limb, main, main component of the democracy. But if this perception has been created, I'm not getting into the reasons why it has been created, but this perception has gone that probably all is not well between the judiciary and the legislature. Will the two institutions not sit together and correct this perception somehow? Because even the political parties, the opposition parties have started and cashing on this mistrust factor. We saw Arvind Kejriwal recently saying that the, the, the phones of uh, the judges have been tapped. There is no question of mistrust perception between the judiciary and uh, this executive, between the judiciary and the government. Mm -hmm. It is wrong to contain. Okay. Uh, to my mind, it is not there. Okay. Can you cite me any judgment where, where the judiciary, this judiciary has said something about this with respect to the appointment of the judges? Because so from the very beginning, I have said, the judiciary speaks through judgments. If any statement by the judiciary is there, that may be an individual statement, not the statement of the court, not the statement of the Supreme Court. So, and about this Arvind Kedriwa's statement, I think no grievances was raised with respect to taping of the phones, but can you think of it? So before making a statement, one must have fact for it without any foundation and yeah. material basis. You are making a responsible, it is not expected 
from such a responsible person to make a statement like this. So before making a statement, one should verify. Are you going to no, demand not from evidence, but, but that question, you see evidence? Question is, question is not evidence, but whether these statements have any legs to stand. So I'm not, I, I'm, I'm, even I don't feel proper on my part mm -hmm. to respond such a okay. irrelevant statement and irresponsible okay. statement. Okay, so taking you away from this issue, we have to wind up the show. Uh, coming on to the All India Judicial Services, Prime Minister Narendra Modi recently spoke about the All India uh, Judicial Services and how uh, there's going to be a quota and a sub quota in, in the lower judiciary. Uh, how serious is the government uh, really on implementing this? This only definitely government is very serious about it. Okay. But we all the we have to take into confidence all the stakeholders mm -hmm. like the state government and the high courts, okay. because as per Constitution of India, Article 312, it provides this uh, creation of the All India Judicial Services, okay. uh, like Indian Administrative Services, Indian Police Services, Indian Foreign Services, and so many other services. So it is necessary and it should be there. Coming to the quota and the sub quota, uh, you know, within the, the judiciary, in the lower strata of the, of the judiciary, uh, you know, the timing when Prime Minister has made this statement, many political analysts feel that, you know, it's a political move with an eye on uh, elections in important states like uh, UP and Punjab. Uh, what would be your reaction to it? This, this is wrong to say that it is political move. Everything should not be, every development should not be seen with the eye of the political move. In so far as if all India judicial services are created, as reservation we have provided in all other, this all India services, we can provide the reservation to all the other backward classes, scheduled class, scheduled tribes. So they are being deprived of their reservation. And the Prime Minister, Honorable Prime Minister is right for saying that the all India judicial services should be there and this scheduled castes, OBC and scheduled tribes, they should also get their due by way of providing the reservation as it is being provided in other All India services. Thank you, Mr. Chaudhary, for coming on to the point. Thank you. Thank you very much. So that's it on this episode. See you next time with another personality. Goodbye and thanks for watching.